simply speaking, truth is a logical concept. What it means is that when we use true and false, we refer them not to things which are out there in reality, but to things which are up here in our minds. So, for example, if I say that the Earth is square, you would say this is false. But what do you call false? The Earth? The square? No, you call false my statement about the Earth and the square, I mean, being attached to the Earth. So it's a relationship between me and some things out there, which if I create the wrong connection, you can call it false or true. So you call it you call my mind being true or false, and this is why we call it a logical predication. So, and this is most of, most of the times, this is the way we use the concept of truth. Even, even in the case of, for example, a, a dollar bill or a diamond, whatever you can think of, if you say that it's false, what do you, what do you mean? It's not that the thing itself is false. What you mean is that according to our convention, which requires a dollar bill to be done in a certain way by certain people, this is false. But it's again, it's our mental connection between a concept and something that may be true or false, but this thing would still be just what it is, whether it matches my convention or not. Now, still, in classical philosophy, there is a distinction, an important distinction, between logical truth and ontological truth, which is a very important distinction which I struggled with a lot when I was a student in metaphysics. I was not really seeing what the, the ontological truth was. And, uh, and then I realized that it's much simpler than I thought. So truth always involves a connection, a relationship between one something and an intellect. So, in a sense, when I say that uh, the Earth is round, or whatever it is, maybe a little bit elliptical, uh, doesn't matter, I'm conforming my judgment, my intellect, to what the, the Earth really is. So, and this is what really the concept of truth is about, is a relationship between the intellect and something, which expresses something that we call true. So, but in order to do that, there is a premise. Our intellect can conform itself to reality if reality is intelligible. And this is an insight that came very early in, 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 in the philosophical world, especially thanks to the Pythagoreans. They saw the world, especially because they were discovering the numbers as a way to read and study the world. Even they were the first contemporary scientists, in a sense. But uh, they saw the world as intelligible, and that's why the mind can see, can match the world. Think about looking at a Ferrari. The Ferrari can be understood because it was made according to an intelligible design. So that's why if there is intel intelligibility in the world, there is the potential for me to read this intelligibility and conform my mind to the world. So the ontological truth would be the intelligibility that belongs to the thing itself in order for me to understand it. Because when I, when I describe, for example, the law of gravity or the properties of the stone or the behavior of the beaver, I'm describing an intelligible path, an intelligible design. And the only way I can do that if the, is if the design is in the things before being in my mind. And that's what the ontological truth would be, is the truth that belongs to the things before being in my intellect. Of course, we can step forward and say that somehow, if that's truth and it's intelligible, it means that it's coming from a mind. And that's historically actually one good way to approach the, problem, the issue of God in things. But today, just wanting to focus on the concept of ontological truth. Thank you.